Hi everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I have a fig that I want to review for you guys today. It's called LSU Red. And LSU Red was bred by Louisiana State University, hence the name LSU. And there's a number of figs that LSU has actually bred over the years. Some they've officially released through their breeding program and others they have not, that are unofficial, that people have found over the years in their fields uh, or they gave, they've given out cuttings, they've spread them, out, uh, spread them around. And this is one variety that I guess people have named LSU Red. Perhaps Brian can chime in, chime in exactly how this fig got its name. But it's supposed to be a red fig and so far it's not really red. And I've had this tree for about four years now, kind of waiting for it to turn red and it never really does. Um, I think that's probably climate specific. It needs to get quite red or quite ripe for it to turn red. You can see on this particular fig, it's got that purple ribbing down it, which I think as time goes on, this could definitely be red, but realistically, I don't think there's really any true red figs. I think there's, you know, this one's a bit brown, amber, maroon, purple. I don't really think red really exists. And if you're picking a red fig, it's probably just not ripe. Um, if you have a red fig that is ripe, show me a photo. I'd be interested to see it, but I don't know any really truly red figs. Um, but yeah, you can see over here, this one's super ripe. We cut this one actually down the center to see what the inside looked like, and it is beautiful, guys. This is a really interesting fig that um, I think is worth talking about. That's why I'm doing this video for you guys. It's got some interesting characteristics along with the flavor. First off, a lot of the Louisiana State University figs are bred with Celeste in the parentage. So it's very similar shape to Celeste, right? It's got that teardrop shape to it, almost like a pear. Um, you know, usually has a longer neck, maybe even a longer stem. They're easy to pick. They do really well in rainy conditions because they have tight eyes. They have great skin to handle the rain. This fig's no exception because Two days ago it rained about two inches and I forgot about this fig and I didn't pick it and it's pretty much dried up on the tree. Really incredible. Certainly keeping out all this water here with the help of these trash bags is helping. But we've naturally kept this tree just, I think this tree has got the short end of the stick for the most part or this particular pot and where it's situated and it actually just gets less water than the rest of these trees in the patio. Uh, in fact, at one point in the season, it dropped a few leaves, so it looks a bit bare right now, but it's got a lot of branches, it really does. It has a lot of really thinner branches here. It didn't really put out, unfortunately, too many thick branches this year. Maybe I had too many. Um, the production actually has been not bad. I would say the vigor is probably uh, somewhere on the medium side and the production somewhere on the medium side. Um, we've harvested roughly about five or six figs off of this tree. The first two or three didn't really ripen properly. We fixed our moisture problems here in the soil and that fixed itself right up. And then we had two of them that ripened not too long ago before the rain came in and those were really good. Really awesome layered flavor that I want to describe for you in a minute. Um, and I was just shocked because after four years, the tree finally got its act together and started doing well for me. So this year, what I think uh, I'm gonna do is really not prune it all that much. And I think the production next year will be much better. Um, these really you know, small limbs, we're gonna keep the structure here, try not to prune this too much, and we're gonna get much better production next year. With the help of the greenhouse, it really did quite well. I mean, it, it's ripening now, August 9th. I think the earliest one was August 1st. The ripening window seems pretty short, pretty small, which could be a good thing for those of us in short season climates. Um, I know for a fact this is a really good one for humid climates, anyone that has lots of rain. Um, yeah, I think this is certainly a fig that a lot of us should, should look into, but it does take quite a long time for it to really get its act together. Um, so I'm going to pick this and, you know, I think the last thing I want to mention is that the hang time on this seems pretty short, you know, like I think this fig right here looks like it's swelling. It's really small, by the way. Some of these are much larger than others. This is like a small to medium sized fig, but let's say this fig starts to swell. 
really only about four or five days later, this is ready to be picked. So that's a really awesome characteristic of this fig, I think, that you don't have to wait so long before you pick it before it's perfectly ripe. And again, that also really aids in that, you know, in humid climates where anything can happen, where these things could ferment, um, spoil and all that. We did have about one of them a couple days ago that really did spoil with all the heat we've been getting. So it's not like this is the perfect fig for people in California as an example, uh, because that heat really got to it, it seemed like. But you can see, here's the interior of the fig. And I'm gonna kind of get in the shade here to get you guys a, maybe better colors on this. You can see it's sort of amber in here. It's not really as red as I would have liked. And it can get very red in here for sure, uh, without a doubt. And hopefully this camera will focus anytime soon. Yeah, so this to me reminds me a lot of like uh, Brandon Street Unknown, Taramo Unknown. It's got a similar flavor, I think, to those figs. A fig called Nebo, where it's got this halfway in between stage here, even Suwati a little bit. Halfway in between, like what looks like a sugar fig or what looks like a honey fig, and then it's approaching berry because it gets that red interior to it or the pinker interior, and that's what brings in those berry flavors. So let me bite this now. Nice and chewy, because this thing's been drying up on the tree, guys. Even in this rain, that's the incredible thing about this fig, at least, is that it really does seem to perform well here. It's on the later side, though, and without the greenhouse, I wouldn't have it at this time. I probably would have it a month later than I do right now, but with the help of the greenhouse, this thing ripens very early. It's a beautiful fig, too, guys. I mean, look at that. That's very very pretty at least to my eye um, and it's got a layered flavor so the flavor is really like your typical sugar fig um, you know not too intense right it's not too sweet it's got a nice figgy flavor then you follow it up with some honey in there there's definitely some sh some honey sweetness in there your typical honey fig some richness with that and then it's followed up by a pretty decent berry flavor. Um, not the most intense fig, not the most intense flavor, but it's layered. It's got some character to it. It's got some complexity in there. And I think that's really what makes this fig uh, at least worth keeping for another season. Um, you know, there could be better alternatives to this. Like I've mentioned, there's Suwati, Taramo Unknown. Um, I'm going to show you guys those trees right now. Also Brandon Street Unknown, which to my taste buds tastes very similar. This is Brandon Street Unknown. You can see how many figs are on here. This one didn't get a head start. We pruned it quite heavily. You can see how productive it is. It's really starting to come into its own now. It's, I think now this is its third year with me. And I like this fig a lot. And uh, it does really well in the rain just as well. And it's, it's definitely earlier. This is an early fig. Uh, without a doubt. And then we have Suadi over here, which we've talked about this fig quite a bit. Here's actually one that looks like it's ripening up right now, but maybe it's rejecting it. You can see though how productive this is, and it really does have the same flavor for the most part. I mean, not exactly the same, but it's in the same profile. And for me to keep you know, LSU red over, let's say this, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I'm glad that the fig finally stepped up and really showed me what it can do. So who knows, we might keep them all, we might keep just one, but uh, it's nice to have these figs in this particular flavor grouping where it's somewhere in between a berry fig, it's somewhere in between, you know, a honey fig and somewhere in between a sugar fig. It's got all three, all three characteristics to the flavor. It's really nice, so. Anyway, guys, that was LSU Red. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you all soon. See you for tomorrow's video.